Hi, everybody. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Let me know uh, if you can't. My name is Brooks Deerdorf, and uh, I am uh, associate professor of photography here at UCF main campus. Um, and uh, thanks for coming to the info session. I just wanted to have um, be available to kind of answer questions and to give some information about just like what the what the photography program on main campus uh, is all about and what it's like. Uh, I have um, we have um, Wahida from advising who was also here and can answer kind of um, uh, questions related to kind of like uh, course pro progression, more specific questions maybe about the BA or BFA tracks, um, if you if anybody ends up having those. Um, there's Wahida. Hi, Wahida. Hi. I have um, uh, a, a current student, uh, Natasha, who uh, is there in her car in the, in some, with some pink hair. And uh, she has uh, joined us to be able to speak to um, her experience um, a little bit throughout uh, the, the presentation. Um, if, you have, if you have questions along the way, um, I'm happy to answer them. And you can maybe we could try typing them in the chat. Um, so I'll try to uh, just go. This shouldn't take uh, all that long, I don't think. Maybe. Um, Depends on how many questions there are, but it shouldn't take too long, maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, so we'll see. Uh, so just a broad, a very broad overview of the photography area at UCF is um, that it is very specifically embedded like within the fine arts. Uh, that's often a question that I get uh, with students starting out is, um, you know, photography can be thought of in many different ways. Um, but we are in the School of Visual School of Visual Arts and Design. And we are a fine arts program. So we study photography in the context of fine art. And so we when we talk about photography, generally speaking, we are talking about photography uh, in terms of the art world and in terms of uh, the, the type of artwork that we see that is photography based that is in that you might see in museums or galleries. Um, we look at when we when we study different photographers, we look at uh, what I would say artists who are using photography or you would say like lens based um, artists. And um, so that is the kind of context for how I teach for how the classes are run. You, you will get projects uh, often in the 2000, 3000 level classes, they will be project-based classes where there is together, you are learning technical aspects of photography, uh, things like just like how to operate the camera um, and how to edit. And um, we have a film and, photo film and darkroom class. And so you're learning those the technical aspects of using film and working in the dark room, which is really fun, but kind of simultaneous to all that, you are uh, thinking about ideas. You are thinking about uh, your kind of personal self-expression. You are thinking about your the things that you care about and your own passions, and you are using those technical aspects that you learn um, about how to use a camera and how to edit, how to work in the dark room, at the service of your ideas at the service of what you want to communicate to others. And so none of, none of the classes, I would say, that are on main campus are strict, strictly technical courses. Um, they are the, the techniques, um, the te technical aspects of photography are very much integrated in with uh, reading about other photographers' artwork, reading about other ideas, reading about kind of um, uh, the, the contemporary um, kind of culture of photography that is happening today in galleries and museums. Um, and so uh, I think that I would say that is what is, is distinct about this program, um, that we are very much lodged in the fine arts. 
Uh, some students don't want that, and that's totally fine. Some students are really interested in just a specific job, say, like a commercial photographer, wedding photographer, and that's great. Um, if you are one of those people, I would say that um, uh, you will learn much of like what it takes to do those things, much of what it takes to have those skills. For example, there's a there's a studio lighting class, one of a three thousand level class is called um, experimental studio lighting, and a lot of the technical aspects within that course uh, very much translate into say commercial photography, wedding photography. Um, but in the class itself, we do not look at like the ways that different wedding photographers have used studio lighting. Uh, we do not really look at photo journalists. We are specifically kind of like interested in artists in art making and um i really see it kind of as my job as helping students kind of find their voice um through photography find their own kind of creative expression um so that's the kind of philosophy i would say uh of of the area that's my philosophy there are more professors other than me and they kind of like their philosophies may differ a little bit, but the courses are structured. The curriculum is structured in that way. Um, uh, I would say I, I am just so you know, I am the I'm the head of the area uh, there. Occasionally there will be a professor, uh, another professor that will teach courses. Some we have had uh, graduate students teach courses, but that is more rare, I think, than typical. Um, more typical now is that we have, there's another photography program, a part of UCF that is a distinct, that is a different program. It's called, it's the Daytona State Photography Program, and maybe you have heard of that. They have a different campus, um, and they are, they have, there is a, uh, a BS program um, where they a student can go through the Daytona State College and get their AA and uh, enter directly into this BS, BS program with uh, UCF photography faculty at the Daytona State campus. But that is a very distinct program. And I would say that that, that is maybe a uh, potentially a more commercially minded program um, than this, than the, the program at main campus. Uh, and if you have more questions about that, I'm, I'm happy to get into that. Um, so just, uh, just so you guys know the course, some courses that are offered, um, we have a, we have a rotating kind of schedule that we, that I'm trying to make as regular and as, as predictable as possible, but it's, that's, it's not always that, but there is usually always a 2000 level beginning photography course. Um, there are three uh 3000 level courses that rotate expanded the one is called photography in the expanded field uh which means uh we study photography's relationship to uh other media like in the fine arts for example like painting and sculpture and video uh and installation and performance so how photography intersects with all those different mediums is uh the kind of interest in that class we look at lots of, um, this is a kind of contemporary question, how photography intersects with all that media. Um, we, we look at lots of interdisciplinary artists, artists who are using photography and, and many other meeting to, media to kind of express their ideas. Um, I, it's one of my favorite classes to teach. I think it's a really exciting class. And I see a lot of growth in students um, after they take that. Um, there's a film and darkroom class, which is what it sounds like, where we kind of you're, you're shooting film and you're working in the darkroom, learning how to develop film, learning how to uh, uh, print photographs using a larger in the darkroom. Um, and kind of pursuing your own creative projects like along the way. There's a experimental studio lighting class, as I mentioned, and that is you know, there's that class is uh, maybe more a bit more technical than the other courses where we're learning lighting techniques, um, artificial lights, we're using strobe lights, we're using hot lights, we're using flash units, um, uh, lots of different kinds of lighting, lots of different kinds of situations so that a student leaves that class hopefully feeling comfortable um, uh, 
uh, in whatever kind of lighting scenario, or if they have an idea for a particular kind of image, they know exactly how to make it because uh, they they understand the differences between all these different like lighting uh, lighting setups. There are three different uh, advanced 4,000 level classes that generally rotate through advanced photography, special problems in photography, uh, which generally means the top that the main topic of that course uh, changes uh, from term to term and is dependent on kind of the what what the professor wants to do. Um, and then there's a course called theory and practice, which is run uh, occasionally, which gets really into reading, reading about con contemporary photography theory, uh, media theory, um, how photography and art kind of intersect in contemporary culture. And at simultaneously, you're kind of working on your own independent project. The advanced classes, I, I, I also love teaching because um, in those classes, I, I really see it as like a bridge to get students, um, to help students after they graduate. Because I, I remember graduating as an undergraduate and feeling like I wish that I had lots, uh, lots more information just about kind of like how to be an artist and establish myself outside of school. And so I, I teach those courses um, with the thought in mind that like I want to, um, I want these courses to be very independent. I want this, the students to be pursuing their own independent projects, but I also wanna be there to help. And I wanna give students um, kind of real world experiences. And um, so often we will show, we have a kind of partnership with uh, a pop parlor cafe, which is a coffee shop near the arena on UCF campus. Um, when we've showed it other outside venues, but usually I have students kind of go through the process of finishing artwork and framing. Um, we talk about like what kind of professional finishing and framing looks like. And we install our work uh, at a kind of outside location outside the School of Visual Arts, um, where the work is up and can be seen kind of by the general public. Um, I often will have advanced students apply to things, for example, like this term. Uh, we applied to uh, what's called the, um, it just, that it just came up and I thought it would be interesting. It's called the Corridor Project, which is um, uh, artists in Orlando were selected to show their artwork on billboards. And wonderfully, Natasha Harrison um, was selected uh, to have her artwork up on the billboard. So watch, watch out for that. Um, but generally speaking, that's what we do in advanced class. We're, we're, we're looking at things to apply to. We're looking at real world experiences. We're looking at uh, and talking about uh, exhibiting artwork, how to apply to things, how to write artist statements, uh, what a proposal might look like, what a CV might look like. Um, those kinds of professional practices along with um, a kind of in-depth pursuing of, an, of independent projects and me all the while being there to help. So hopefully by the time uh, these students graduate, whether you're, whether you're a photo BFA or a photo BA, that you, have, you feel some confidence being outside of school, knowing what to do, knowing how to pursue a career in photography or, uh, or as an artist, um, or at the very minimum, like working towards applying to uh, an MFA program. Um, because that is often the uh, pursuit for um, maybe more serious art students uh, these days. Um, uh, we've had many uh, photography alumni do wonderful things. We've had photography uh, alumni of the program. Uh, multiple students have gotten MFAs at different places, um, places like SCAD or places like MICA. Uh, there's a student getting an MFA at Georgia State right now. Um, we have um, all sorts of like um, alumni that are in kind of professional areas and still are using their photography for, so there's one student that graduated a number of years ago that is um, working in Atlanta, uh, photographing on TV and movie sets. Uh, we have another uh, alumni that is 
um, kind of social media manager, a, a few different alumni that are like social media managers and kind of making photographs and kind of running people's like um, social media, um, people doing product photography, uh, people doing kind of like professional portraiture. So there, there are all sorts of things that people are pursuing kind of after leaving the program. And I'm always interested and excited to see what they do. Um, but I'm wondering, uh, Natasha or Carrie, um, is there any way that you guys could speak to kind of your experience as you, you both have moved through the program? Because you are at, in a position now where I think you both are graduating with your B, BFAs uh, next term, right? And you've been through almost every level of the courses that we have. So would you guys mind speaking a little bit to your experience uh, as you've gone through? Do you mind if I go first, Carrie? Okay, cool. Can everyone hear me all as well? Okay, um, well, I am a transfer student. So if anyone is transferring from another school to CF, I wanna say that it was a difficult ride, but when we got there, it was amazing. And I truly love the photo department and all that it entails and what it gives. I think the basics, like your basic digital classes and your basic film classes prepare you for the advanced classes completely. And I feel like the advanced classes have given me a lot of creative liberties and a lot of freedom to do literally whatever I want with the tools that I've been given. And I love the resources resources that I have, like the printers and the studio lighting and the backdrops and the enlargers. So honestly, it's kind of just, I'm just having fun. It's just like a fun time. It's a fun program. You feel really connected to all your classmates. And if you have any questions, you can always ask and you never feel like judged or anything. In fact, you feel like even more like you have more creative freedom to do whatever you want. So I personally have loved my time here. Um, I've heard there uh, the UCF photos reputation prior to coming and has honestly met the standards that I had. It's been pretty great. Um, I think I think honestly what I was confused about in the beginning was just the rotation of the classes, but once you understand it, it's pretty like easy to understand. So if you have any questions for like how to apply for a dark room before a studio lighting or something like that, like that's just something to talk about now. Um, but yeah, I, I like it. <laughs> I've been here for a while, <laughs> for years, so I like it. Thanks, Natasha. Is there anything you, want, you wanted to add, Carrie? Um, sure. So, hi, everyone. I'm Carrie. I'm a senior. Um, I came in having already taken a beginning photo class when I was at my community college. And I kind of thought to myself, like, I don't really need this. But I recommend if you're considering whether or not to take beginning photo, that's a really good thing. It kind of helps you like open up into just from knowing technical stuff to, um, to getting into like thought processes behind it and like ex exploring conceptual ideas. Um, so I recommend that. The photo program here is really good. It's really tiny, but I really like it. We vet a dark room. A lot of uh, colleges don't have a dark room, even if they have a nice art program and stuff. Um, so that's a really nice resource for us to have. I love the um, amount of context that we get. Like we, we're not just taking photos in like an echo chamber. You know, we get we we uh, get resources from, and we like see artists, contemporary artists that are working right now. We see what kind of stuff they're making. Sorry for any noise, um, and um, what you know what what they're making, and we make our work in context with the contemporary art world. And I think that's really important. Um, you know, for when you get out of college, so that you can kind of find your place. Um, in like photography. So I, uh, I really like the program here. It's really great. Brooks is pretty cool, I guess. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, take a photo class. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. 
Thank um, Yeah, and I that reminds me also in the a lot of the advanced classes, um, I I I love to have visiting artists come in and talk to the classes, um, and we try to do that pretty often. Um, we generally try to have at least one every uh, every semester. Um, a, a semester ago, we had five or six, um, but we're just contemporary artists, photographers are talking to us and um, talking to us about their practice, their experiences, their experiences in school, their experiences after they got out of school, kind of setting up their careers, what it's like now. So just trying to get like more voices than mine also uh, is important to me, like because I, I certainly have a perspective on art and photography. Um, and, but I, it's not that I want to only transmit that to my students, it's that I want students to understand uh, the breadth of like what is possible out there and then have the students um, have the photo BFAs, the photo BAs kind of like choose what they are most excited about and pursue kind of their individual passions like within that. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so that's another important thing, um, is, is kind of in addition to these world world experiences, getting lots of different voices, like, uh, in the class and ha having students exposed to that. And we also, um, often we'll take field trips, uh, actually tomorrow in the advanced class, we're going to the Alphand Inn. And uh, they have a wonderful contemporary art collection with lots of photography there. And um, it's kind of looking at how artists, contemporary artists are kind of like presenting their work and what are they doing and seeing them, seeing them in person, I think are important experiences. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering, Wahida, um, would you, could you, would you mind jumping in and speaking a little bit to maybe different, a difference between getting a BA with a specialization in photography and getting a BFA? Sure. So hello again. Um, Natasha, congratulations. That's awesome. Do you know where that billboard is going to be? Um, there's no location yet. Um, okay. When I know, I will let everyone let us know. know. <laughs> but it'll okay. be up December 27th. Oh, awesome. Congrats again on that. Um, so yes, we do have a BFA, a studio art BFA with a specialization in photography. And this is the one that um, Professor Deardorff is talking about. And then we have the um, art BA with a uh, studio art track. Now the difference is with the BFA or the Bachelor of Fine Arts, you get to specialize in photography. So the majority of your studio art classes will be photography classes. So you're doing um, six courses in your specialization. Um, and those are the courses that they were talking about, the 3000 level, the 4000 level courses. Carrie did mention the 2000 level course and before anyone registers for that, please check with advising because some of you will not, that credit will not apply to your degree. And so we definitely want to figure out how to make you or how you're able to take that or take a course that will give you that equivalent experience. Um, and. Uh, we also go back to Brooks for information on that and how to make that happen. Um, so the Bachelor of Fine Arts or the BFA is a program that you would have to have a mentor for. And if you chose the photography specialization, your mentor would more than likely be Brooks. Um, to be admitted into the program, you have to have a mentor. And so uh, you would have to have the studio art portfolio completed. Um, take one upper level class in photography and then talk with Brooks if he's able to work with you as a mentor, then we do the paperwork to get you changed into the BFA program. Um, with the BA, you get to kind of, you can take your photography courses, but you're not taking six courses in photography. You're not going to be able to do all of that because you kind of have the flexibility of taking multiple areas. So you can do some painting courses, some photography courses, of course, some uh, uh, sculpture, uh, ceramics, uh, book arts, printmaking. So that's more of a broad based um, major in, in the art um, studio areas. 
Um, and then books also mentioned the program out of Daytona. Daytona State has what we call a two plus two program where you enroll at Daytona State, you do the two years associate in um, arts degree or associate in science degree, and then you transfer over to the program at Daytona State and do the two years of photography program there. Um, typically, if you're you know, here at UCF in the main campus, you're not doing that program at all. So, um, and that's very specific to um, more, I think it's more technical, right, Brooks? More commercial, as, as you mentioned, yeah. Yeah, um, so they have, they, have, they have courses like, um, like commercial photography or photojournalism, yeah. um, yes. courses like that, where, whereas we are very, very distinctly in the fine arts, yeah. So that's a brief overview of the, the differences in the program with the Bachelor of Fine Arts. You also, you're, um, there's a capstone course called BFA um, exhibit or seminar. And that's where, again, you're working with your mentor and, and selecting um, specific images that you are putting into that final show um, in your final semester. So I'm, I'm sure Natasha and Carrie are looking, for, is looking forward to that in the spring semester. <laughs> that's an exciting time. Your family gets to come on and, so, and, and, and you know, see your work. So it is, it's a very different program as in the courses you're taking. Credit hours are still the same to graduate, but your specific photography courses are gonna be more if you do this, the uh, BFA uh, photography specialization. Um, and I, if I can just throw in there, if you have not made your appointment to see SVAD advising yet, if you're a current student, please do, do so like now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> for your spring courses. Thanks. Um, and I ha there's a couple questions and Wahida, maybe you can answer the most recent mm -hmm. one is a specialization in photography for studio art BFA determined after the portfolio. Yeah, so what you would want to do is uh, apply for the portfolio first, the studio art portfolio, um, and then you would want to make sure you're taking a 3000 level photography course. Uh, once you determine that you want to specialize in photography and want to do the, B art, the studio art VFA, speak with Brooks and you know, determine if this is the right fit for you and if you will be your mentor. There's a process I'm sure he has to selecting students for the photography specialization. And once he agrees to that, then um, there is a form you fill out. You bring it or you email it to our office and we will take care of the paperwork to get you into the major. Um, thanks, Wahida. And then mm -hmm. the other, other questions from Tisha, um, maybe Natasha and Carrie can speak to their plans. Um, but I, but how many students and Wahida, maybe you can, you can speak to that too, but you, you know, generally speaking around a term we have, uh, total in total in the photography classes, there's 60 or so 60 plus students, uh, BFAs, usually there's two to three BFAs graduating per term. Generally speaking, sometimes there's five, sometimes there's one, but generally speaking, like two to three BFAs a term. So, I mean, I see that I, uh, Wahida maybe always wants more and more students all the time, but uh, I I like I like that size because I can work with um, uh, working with two or three BFA students per term allows me individual attention with those students, um, and I think uh, that is a benefit for us for students. Um, but Natasha and Carrie, what are you going to do after you graduate? <laughs> Carrie, you can go first. <laughs> oh boy, thank you, Natasha. Um, <laughs> so um, it's been said a bit before, but the UCF photography program is very good, especially in comparison to like a lot of the other programs at, at um, preparing you as, a, um, as an upcoming graduate for like the real world after graduating. Like I know how to put, apply to put my work in a show. I know how to write a nice artist statement. I've got my CV ready. I've got my website ready. And I think that's a real plus that maybe you don't get so much of in other specializations. Um, personally, I'm hoping one day to go to graduate school, but I'm not planning to do that as soon as I graduate. I'm going to take a few years um, to build my portfolio. Immediately after graduating, my goal is to find a job that's at least some sort somewhere in the arts. It might not be, you know, in a museum, in an exhibition, but something where I can hold my camera and take photos 
and maybe even get paid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping within um, a year or two to move out of Orlando into a, maybe a more art centered uh, city. I'm looking at Atlanta. Um, and, um, you know, I, I'd like to go into um, editorial or fashion type of photography work. And um, the, the job market is uh, tough, but there are a lot of opportunities out there and I'm hoping that I can grab onto one. <laughs> I'm in a similar boat where I feel super prepared to like apply for shows and I will also be holding off and going to graduate school, but we've spoken about this a lot in our classes that graduate school for photography and most art areas, you need to have some time in between your undergrad to your graduate to kind of like fill your portfolio a bit. Um, while we have been making a lot of work, it's not been super cohesive because we're learning about film and we're learning about digital and studio lighting. So not all of it's like, a cohesive body of work necessarily until you get to your advanced classes. So a lot of my time in the next coming years will be making work that I find to be cohesive and captivating. Um, I will be staying in Orlando for one other year. Um, I currently work at a high school doing photography. So I'm hoping I can just continue doing some more school related, either teaching some about photography and some basics or some basic design principles. Um, but I will be applying to shows and trying to get my name pretty much out there. Um, but yeah, it's, there's so, I didn't realize how many art opportunities that weren't just making art there were until I came to this program. So I am completely comfortable doing art related things like printing out people's photography work or like matting people's work, framing. That's something that sounds really interesting to me. And not necessarily just for photography, but preparing artworks in general sounds really interesting um, and or repairing some stuff for the art world. So I'm hoping to find something along those lines. And I feel like there's some opportunities in Orlando for that as well as elsewhere. So I'm in no rush to leave immediately, but I am planning on after Orlando moving somewhere completely different than Florida, like North Mountains, mm -hmm. cold. <laughs> don't know what that's like um and I feel like that would also extend expand my vision of work currently which is very Florida hot and I want to see what else I can do in a different climate so yeah cool thank you guys um so I'm I'm happy uh to answer any questions uh if there are if there are any more questions uh limit to the number of bfa students accepted um no we and that's usually not a that's usually not an issue um it really comes down to um just speaking with me directly and me understanding that i mean first is passing portfolio that kind of is the 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 biggest thing um uh and then it's speaking to me and making sure that uh, you know, your you would be your goals align with kind of the program goals, and um, that you've I think that as what he just said, you've taken at least kind of one photography class, so that I I generally know you or know your work. Um, but we, there's not usually an issue with limit, no. Um. And so if there, if, uh, I mean, keep keep typing away if you still have questions, but um, if there are no other questions, also um, I'm always avail available uh, through email and my email is brooksdeerdorf um, at ucf.edu. Um, you can look me up on the faculty page at SFAD um, and I can answer any more, more specific questions uh, that you have um, over email. Um, Natasha and Carrie, what, what year did you guys apply for portfolio? I did, um, last spring, I believe. Yeah. Right. When the pandemic hit. Yeah. So last spring. Yeah. Spring of 2019 was also when I applied and, um, I did fail the drawing section of portfolio. So I had to <laughs> take, um, in, in, I forgot the word, <laughs> intensive, <laughs> um, and um, 
yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, you know, you take the class and then you're through portfolio. So, um, even if you, uh, do, you know, not quite make it through portfolio on your first try, uh, don't be discouraged. Just take those classes and, um, you'll get through. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. Hannah's watching out for me in the chat. Um, all right. Well, uh, if that is it, thank you everyone for being here. Thanks for uh, thanks everyone for who participated. Um, and uh, yes, if you have any more specific questions, send me an email. Um, but thanks everybody. We'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.